few things, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to do both. Uh, one of them is about Christmas, but I did read it on the aforementioned podcast, so, you know. Anyway, uh, so this first one uh, is called Life Through a Lens, and I wrote it yesterday on National Poetry Day. I did not know that there was a theme, because I don't pay attention to things, uh, but it is kind of about truth, so, you know. <clears throat> oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an accent, by the way. We come to you live from the council estate that looks great on my Instagram, captured with two lines that I call mine. This is going to be too small for me. I'm so dreadfully tall. That wasn't part of the poem, that was just a live complaint. <laughs> <clears throat> I call mine that I rearranged after seeing them last week, spoken by a girl who flees water be here. I'm sure she won't mind. Do you mind? I'm borrowing the times that are not mine. I'm sure it's fine. To mine the minds of miserable lives that surround me. Mine is sublime, if not empty. But it's okay, because I'm trying to find myself and I seem to have found everyone else. They call it cultural appropriation. <laughs> As if we white folk aren't allowed to join in, I mean. Honestly, that's kind of racism. <laughs> I'm trying to find myself, and like I said, I found everybody else, and I'm keeping them all in my, you're going to love this, I just learned this the other day, my ends. <laughs> you see, I grew up on an estate too. You know, I'm really just like all of you, but, <laughs> you know. I smile outward from the mirror, though mine is always bigger. I'm telling our stories with the voice of a ni- Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're not supposed to say that. <laughs> I'm dreadfully sorry. I kind of got lost in it all. <laughs> Listen to one rap mixtape. I got a bit caught up. <laughs> but, you know, I can take off my ebony coat and go back to Canterbury and forget about all of you. Why are you being like no, you can't say that, Caroline. Oh, you can't do that, Caroline. This is just like you, you know. You always do this. You're so ungrateful. This is what you always do when I try and speak for you. I mean, I, I mean, speak, speak up for you. Speak up for you. Using my platform as a white woman to speak up for you. I'm not speaking for you. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. I don't know why you're being like this, I really don't. Maybe I should, to use the vernacular, be real with you. They're not going to listen to you. They don't care about you. Nobody is going to listen to you. I am your only path to their ears, because guess what? All your fears have come true. You're back on that boat, and I am in charge, because guess what? They only want your voice when it doesn't come from you. They only want your voice if it comes from my face, my white face, and yours is just, you know, aesthetically unpleasing. No offence, I'm, I'm just saying what they're thinking, you know how it is, but here's the real truth, I'm going to replace your vocal cords, I'm going to wear your darkest days. I will talk like I understand, and you will stand and you will be grateful that I have given you a seat at my table, because though you are a meal that I would never be able to handle, because you know, spices, <laughs> but you must be grateful that I am still talking, and don't interrupt me when I am talking in your voice. Thanks, kids. <laughs>